So, hello everybody. My name is Wilke Trai, um, also known as Lolly Deep. I'm very sad to be not at GreenCon this evening. You see, it's rather my living room. Um, the background is my son got sick last night and uh, since my wife is also out of house i'm unfortunately not able to turn to berlin today but i hope you still will enjoy my talk which covers the la last 10 months of green mining the first 10 months of green mining and also a little glimpse to the future um how will the blockchain look like uh let's say in a year from now so where better to start a talk like this than at the Genesis blog, the very first blog of Grin. The Genesis blog, oh, that's bright. The Genesis blog, blog zero, was mined on January 15th um, at approximately 4 p.m. UTC. Um, it was a Kokaroo 29 blog. I will tell a bit more about that. And also here you see some data about network statistics that's a network difficulty of slightly over 70 billion and the AR scale of 1865. So what's the matter with these two numbers? Um, I'll tell you. Grin, as you likely know, has two proof of work styles. So one is Kukaroo or now after the uh, fork in July Kukaroot and the other one is Kuka2. Um, Kuka root um, has a fixed parameter minus 29, what, which means it uses 2 to the power of 29 edges. Additionally, it is a bit modified, um, such that it's not that efficient to be mined on ASICs, and also it uh, is changed every six months um, yeah, to prevent ASIC development. The next time it will change will be uh, in January 2020. So uh, likely that we later from John hear something about that. The other style is Kuka 231. It's a more ASIC friendly um, algorithm that where uh, we have not only one instance, in fact, the number um, uh, after Kuka 2 can be anything between 31 and 63. So how do they distinguish? Kuka 2 n uses 2 to the power of n edges per graph. So uh, they grow quite quickly. Um, it's unlikely we would see anything higher than n, maybe 34, 35 in the near future. So the purpose is also clear why we have two proof of work styles um, the one is more gpu friendly and that's the one we more started with the cooker root the other one is um, for long-term uh, usage on green so but how does green actually balance these two proof of works i mean um, they are not at, at the same difficulty are they no how it works, each um, of the proof of works um, got a separate scale factor. And so if you see the global network difficulty, um, you always need to divide that by the scale factor to get the actual difficulty of this proof of work. So the Kukaru scale um, changes every block in order to balance um, the number of blocks for each of the proofs of work to a certain ratio. Um, on the other hand, all these different Kuka2 instances um, have more or less a fixed um, constant uh, scale factor, which is n times 2 to the power of n minus 23. So, for example, for Kuka231, we have uh, 7,900. 36 and for Kuka 2 32 it's 2 to the power of 14. So directly after our Genesis block um, the 
actual difficulty to mine a new a new kookaroo block was slightly over 9 million and a kookaroo block slightly over 2 million. What means that um, one out of um, 9 million found cycles um, approximately build one new block. So at the first day of green, it took one hour and 36 minutes until um, another block appeared, level block one. It was another Kukuru 29 block and uh, well, it went so on after block one, um, it got much faster mining the next blocks. But um, it took a while till we found the first uh, Kuka 2 block. This was in fact block height 230 and that one was found after seven hours and 27 minutes. So directly after we mined the Genesis block, uh, you can see the actual difficulties uh, decreased a lot um, from over 9 million in Kukaru to slightly over 400,000. So that's the reason why later blocks came uh, rather quickly. You can see the line for Kukaru is a little bit uh, scanning, while Kuka 2 is almost a flat line. The reason behind that, you may already guess it, um, the Kukaru um, difficulty tries to balance a number of blocks and uh, for each proof of work. And so, well, Kuka 2 31 blocks were very, very lonely guys in the first day uh, of Krin because only 12 of the more than 1,200 blocks were Kuka 2, 31 blocks. Hmm. A little bit sad. But uh, a reason for that can be found um, on my next slides. So, because what happens on the next month, Graham got a tremendous amount of support by uh, mining software developers. Um, I listed here all I was able to fi uh, find, including the release days. And you see, especially for NVIDIA cards, those miners that are still very popular, a lot of them were released right at the beginning, the first one or two days of Green. While for Kuka 2, until we saw some uh, proper third party miners, uh, well, this, that just took some time. So, uh, yeah, over time the ratio normalized. And uh, well, here we have a scale adjustment um, for the full 10 months. You can see in the beginning the cooker root scale dropped like a stone. But afterwards, it was slowly increasing with the release of better mining software and normalized um, to its original value. But then, um, well, with the hard fork in July, we have a drop. The reason behind that is that for coca root, um, solutions are found two times often, and so we only need half the scale. So, and this is what results from that. That is the number of blocks per day we have for each of the proof of works. You see Kuka 2 started with very, very few, few blocks the first day, but then it quickly normalized um, once the scale did adjust. And well, now they are on a collision course and it's likely that in January we will see a crossover. So the first day where we have more Kuka 2 than Kuka Roo blocks are yet to come. And so, if you now see a graphical representation of all of the blocks, that is how it looks like. Um, a nice fade from mostly only gray to more blue. The color is a little bit misleading here um, because, well, the blue is a, a bit, bit more catchy. In fact, we didn't have the first day um, with more Coca-2 blocks than coca blocks yet but it will come quite soon. So what's going to happen in the future? In the future, the picture we just saw will change dramatically because starting at January 15th, the um, scale for Kukaroo 31 
will drop, while the ones for higher instances of Cooker 2 will stay where it is. As a result, one year from now, there will be no more new uh, Cooker 231 blocks, only Cooker 232, and a few still of Cooker Rule, or whatever is the successor of Cooker Rule. Um, yeah, so um, slowly we need to say goodbye to both of them um, because we will see more Cooker 2 blocks than Cooker Root. But after that, um, the ratio will flip and we rather soon, I guess, we'll see then more Cooker 2 32 blocks. So the future is morally red in that picture. So move myself a bit and to allow you full sight to this little nice search picture. Where's Waldo? Well, what is Waldo? Waldo is the future of green mining. Um, the, those things we will see a lot more in um, the next in my next 10 months or maybe next year. Waldo and Waldo the second you should search in this picture are the first to Cooker 2 32 blocks in the chain. Yeah, they existed. They existed even before the 10 months mark. Um, well, I lied a little bit before <laughs> in the slide where I didn't list him. So, but where he is, well, I, I give you a hint. It's really hard to spot that on this resolution. Um, right there on the bottom left corner, <laughs> you can find it. So, Cooker 2. 32. There are actually blocks on the chain. If you want to look them yourself up, you'll find them uh, with block height 430,112 and wall of the second with 255 at the end. Both blocks were mined last um, week's Monday at 4 and 2 p.m. UTC approximately. Um, and well, I must say we were extremely lucky mining these blocks um, because, well, we mine them on graphic cards that are not that good in Cooker 2 mining, uh, really on RX 580. Well, many of them though. Uh, nevertheless, we had a lack of 588%, uh, what means that we expected 0.35 blocks approximately and ended up with already two of them. Well, this way it was uh, even profitable. So I have to say Waldo the second was an incident. Uh, the guy running the mining farm uh, didn't turn off all of the rigs um, soon enough after we detected that we already were uh, successful. So, uh, <laughs> We had a lot of luck here. Originally, we expected to have uh, to need two or three more days to actually mine the blocks. I haven't done this alone, so I got some help, and I need to bring up some special things. Um, first of all, to Mirel Dismanal, as a CTO of Helvetica Mine SA. That's a big mining farm located in Switzerland. Uh, he helped me bringing up the required. Um, hash capacities to mine this block. And the other two guys are Philip Andreas and Dobromir Dobrev, uh, the founders of MMPUS. MMPUS is a mining operation system and uh, they provided uh, good profiles for us, um, for the miners, so uh, we mined even rather efficiently. So, how does it work from an algorithmic perspective? I go over that very roughly since my time budget is running up. Um, over the idea of green mining is that we go through a list of all of the edges that are uh, still alive in our graph. And now we want to see which of them uh, is actually a dead end because a dead end cannot make a cycle. So we send over markers to a node degree map. This node degree map corresponds to nodes where the edges arrive. So, and after we did all those markers, uh, we reversely read, okay, are there sufficiently many markers um, 
for my edge to survive at the right position what exactly the right position is and um, what means sufficiently that's a devil in the detail um, and distinguishes between uh, cooker root and cooker two anyways that's a rough idea if you implement it exactly as here on this last two slides it's very efficient um, because we only need one or two bits here for each node and one bit to indicate edge aliveness so for a cooker 232 this is um, one gigabyte of memory for cooker 231 it's only 512 megabytes so it's very compact in memory and very easy to implement problem is it doesn't work well on gpus um, there we usually use another strategy and the strategy is mean mining for mean mining we take our edges completely and put them into buckets there are much less buckets than before um, entries on the full range array um, bucket sort is something a gpu can well do um, because of its cache structure so this is something uh, that's quick on the gpu and then once our edges are put to buckets um, we do exactly the same stuff um, as on the lean miner but only within the buckets so those areas we need to handle then um, are kind of only local um, they are in shared memory of the gpu so that's again something fast what's not so fast is if you do the lean mining algorithm on the gpu and you need bitwise addresses over 512 megabytes uh, that's horribly slow don't try that yeah that that works on asics where you have all of the memory uh, on chip and uh, can address bitwise yeah that's much better so and when you do mean mining after you uh, you decided which edges survive you resort them because each edge is connected to two nodes so we trim first on one side and then resort them for the other side and so we swap them for the back that's mean mining strategy the miner i implemented to make cooker 232 even feasible uh, feasible on eight gigabyte cards that was Sleen mining. Sleen mining now is a kind of hybrid. Um, it works in a way that um, that we take only a subset of all edges and put them then to buckets. And um, once we've done that, we uh, do a marking on this with this bucket um, well but the bucket since we only had a subset of the edges contains only a subset of all edges it could contain so um, we mirror a part of the global node map to our local storage do there the marking and then copy it back you see it here we have in red new uh, markers done and uh, in black um, ones that already existed before so in this process we iterate until we have covered all of our edges and then we do indeed again a second pass again take all the alive edges put them to buckets trim them locally and once that has happened we decide okay this is a nonsense that survived the indica uh, indices of the edges that survived or not survived here i picked the non-surviving and then we resort them again to buckets but now by their index and so we mark again to our edge bitmap um, which uh, are here the non-surviving edges um, I do it with non-surviving because in most of the rounds the non-surviving are less than the surviving. So when you do it like this, you always need the full edge um, aliveness bitmap and the node bitmap, but over that only quite a low extra storage for the buckets because we operate on a subset of the edges. And that's exactly the idea how we make cooker to 32 mining feasible um, 
on 8 gigabyte cards. It could even work on 4 gigabyte cards and uh, well it must be even on 2 but that's no fun then. So as a conclusion we even could go to Kukatu 33 and 34 with 8 gigabytes. So the last serious slide for my talk. Uh, I, here summed up a bit the performance penalty you get when you, when you use Selene mining. So the Kuka 231 codes are uh, some I did release this week or plan to release rather sooner. And the Kuka 231 are based on that um, and will run then on the same cards. So you see, we mined our blocks actually with only 0.23 <laughs> crash per second. That's rather slow, but it obviously was enough to mine the blocks. Overall, when we switch from Kuka 2, 31 to 32, we see approximately 40% of the performance left. Since Kuka 2, 32 blocks come, came, come twice as often, um, we can expect already a few weeks, less than four or five weeks, um, into the fade out of Kuka 2, 31, that Kuka 2, 32 becomes more profitable. Um, here, if you see the Radeon 7, um, benchmarks you also can see the performance differences what happens when we have memory available um, usually you lose approximately 20 to 30 percent of the speed then um, which is rather good considering how much uh, memory is saved so to end my talk i'd like to bring up two bug reports <laughs> A kind of funny note to the end. Um, I have to say it was very very simple hiding the first Kuka 232 blocks because there were some bugs with the explorers going around. Yeah, compare here uh, we see grin.blockscan.com versus grinscan and yeah on grinscan we see it's correctly recognized as Kuka 232 but exactly the same block on blockscan.com is um, described as AT31. Hmm, there's something wrong there, isn't it? Well, that way, of course, if someone looks up the block in the wrong explorer, it's clear you will recognize that this is actually Kuka232. But this is only one bug report. It can get even worse. Let's have a look to grinmit.com. Do you see, or well, do you not see what's going on there? There's a block missing in the list. It's not there. It is like this block never existed. And also the difficulty calculation for the next block here is a little bit off because, well, the next block definitely had a difficulty. But the problem is that the explorer seems to have a problem uh, storing uh, the block at all, so um, there's no history uh, this one could look up. And if you type in the explicit height of our Kuka 232 block, no search result is found. So uh, like this block never existed. And uh, also you can't uh, catch the kernels <laughs> in this block. So please guys, I will put a bug report on this. Please fix. Waldo deserves to live and to be seen. And so that's, that was my talk. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the evening. Bye.